Good morning. I wanted to talk to you today about uh, energy efficiency, entropy, and various issues uh, connected with modern life and possibly the maintenance of civilization. So it seems like I picked a particularly hot day for it. Um, Thermometer saying it's over 100 degrees here, and we only have a slight breeze today. But let's see if I can show you a few things. Um, right there, this outbuilding is our um, our pump house uh, shed. It holds the booster pump to maintain water pressure in the house. And out there is our solar panels, and you see a propane tank in front of it. You see a water tank, with a, um, which holds uh, water before it's gravity fed down to the booster pump. So we only have to pump water into that water tank every few days. So that's an efficiency, instead of it coming on constantly. Um, few other items around the property here, show you real quick. There's my Kubota tractor. We live on top of a hill here, so you have to be able to uh, grade the road, maintain the road for getting in and out. And right there's our well head. Here is a pipe mount of German equatorial pipe mount for telescope with no motor drive or anything, no locks, and there's an observatory. Now here's our babies right here. It's our solar solar panel array. It's uh, 5.1 kilowatt array, and uh, it covers 120% of all of our electrical needs. Except in the summer, because of air conditioning, we have to uh, import some power, but it's not as much power as we sell throughout the year. And over here is a fifth wheel trailer. It's about 30 feet long and it's uh, a bit costly in energy to tow this thing as you can well imagine. Um, I've calculated that it requires 11.7 million BTUs per thousand miles to tow that trailer. And right here, I'm going to show you the reason we live on top of this hill. Just quickly. It's what I call my million dollar view. Very hard for me to see the screen here, so I don't know what you're looking at it quite. And then this is the back side of our house. It's a two story clear story. And right there is our metal garage. Right there, which I built in 2007. That's where we're headed now to get out of the sun. Here's the view down the driveway.
There we go. Oh, I ought to be able to see. This is the pickup truck we use to tow. And we have to drive it once a week to keep it running good, but uh, other than that, we don't put over 200 miles a month on it. We try not to. And that's the reason we originally bought this truck, was to be able to tow that trailer out there. The truck by itself, without towing anything, requires 6.2 million BTUs to go a thousand miles. And this is our latest uh, transportation purchase. This is a 2015 Ford C-Max Energy. And in, in an electric drive, this thing requires 1.1 um, million BTUs to go a thousand miles. But with a two-thirds electric drive mix and one-third internal combustion engine mix, it takes around 1.8 million BTUs per thousand miles. So it's not bad. I think I could do better with a pure electric car, but that's probably not, that's probably going to be about three years off or so. So I'm just going to prop myself up here in the car and chat a little bit. Um, So, as you know, I've, I've had a few videos on uh, energy efficiency and near-term human extinction and so forth, and I just wanted to uh, get a few more thoughts out there on that subject because I've been watching some videos on YouTube about uh, entropy. So, and this brings to mind one thing. Um, life itself couldn't exist without entropy. So we uh, we just wouldn't be here. It's just the way the universe works. Uh, energy becomes less organized and and so forth. Uh, I don't want to get into any of the complications on that, but uh, uh, when you look at the solar panels, for example, I just showed you, um, you got to realize there's no transmission losses or hardly any transmission losses from those solar panels when I'm operating uh, my house during the daytime. And uh, so when I'm charging this car, there's no transmission losses. Virtually none. Um, now if I was going off of grid power, purely just grid power alone, um, it would take, just for me to get a kilowatt hour out of the wall, it, which is 3,412 BTUs, it would take uh, 10,256 BTUs at the generating plant uh, just to ship me that one kilowatt hour. So in other words, I'd, use, I'd lose uh, about uh, two-thirds of the energy just in transmission alone. And I don't think very many people realize that, and I think this is one of the secrets to the success uh, I see coming with renewable energy, especially distributed generating capacity. At, uh, if everybody has their own generating capacity, you really requires a lot less energy to operate the, the grid. And it just doesn't make any sense the way we uh, been doing it for the last hundred years with centralized generating capacity and all the attendant losses. Uh, but be that as may, um, well that's an extreme form of entropy. Um, again, you look at this truck. It, it uh, a gallon of gasoline's got 111,836 BTUs in it. That's uh, the gasoline I buy around here is. And uh, that truck is doing real good if it can use 25% of that energy for motion. And the rest is wasted out the tailpipe and is heat. Well, the electric drive on this car is 90% efficient. And this is why we want to get a pure electric car, which would be even more energy efficient than this thing is. Um, that's probably going to happen in about three and a half years. But in the meantime, 
the electric uh, drive that I'm operating is at least uh, getting me 95 miles per gallon equivalent. So all of this is in the way of reducing entropy. In our house, for example, we've um, switched over to LEDs completely. Um, yesterday, we just got a new refrigerator recently. We had to do it. It's a French door refrigerator, a 26 cubic foot model, a Whirlpool, and I stuck a kilowatt meter on it, and it turns out the thing's only drawing 106 to 110 watts when it's running. And over a three day period, uh, I measured about 1.1 kilowatt hour per day. So I have a, I don't know whether it's an eight or a 10, I forget which, but I have a small refrigerator out on the front porch for liquids and overflow stuff. And it's drawing the same amount of energy, almost, as, uh, as this big 26 cubic foot refrigerator. So that just shows you what energy efficiency can do. Of course, there's practical limits to energy efficiency. You can't get over 100% efficiency or anything like that. But almost everything in our daily lives has uh, been way too energy intensive. And I've pointed this out to people. And they just don't seem to realize uh, what this energy efficiency means. So for example, uh, a lot of people look back nostalgically at kerosene lanterns, but a kerosene lantern requires, if you include uh, 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 transmission losses, a kerosene lantern requires well, about 3,000 times more energy to operate than a uh, LED light bulb. And I don't have those transmission losses during the day. Uh, it looks like, of course, I'm, you know, I'm not going to be operating very many of them during the day. But this is one of the other things we've been looking at. We've been talking to Tesla about having a Powerwall 2 installed here. And I'm not sure whether that's going to happen uh, because of the cost just yet. But uh, if we had that, then we'd be running day and night on our solar most of the year. And also we would have uh, um, emergency power. And if we had a power outage, which we do have occasionally around here, uh, we would still have power for the house throughout the outage. The only thing is we couldn't operate the, the air conditioner for the house off of that power wall too. And we have a couple other heavy duty loads which we would, wouldn't have on that battery. But Basically, the whole house, pretty much 80% of our loads could be, 80-90% of our loads could be on that battery. It's a, it's a 14 kilowatt hour battery pack, and uh, so we're looking into that. Um, so this, to me, begs the question: Why, why the near-term human extinction people want everybody to to give up and just go into grief counseling? and not try to do anything anymore. Now I'll grant you, I'm not off carbon yet. We've reduced our carbon footprint about 60% uh, if you consider towing the trailer, which we're going to do this year. But in years, if we didn't tow that trailer, we would have a close to 80% reduction in our carbon footprint. So I think all this is worth doing. And there seems to be some inherent energy efficiencies and a reduction in entropy from many of these things. The solar panel, for example, no transmission losses, uh, even less transmission losses through the grid uh, if I have a, a standalone battery for the house and so forth. So that's the thing I want you to consider. I, I think I'm not seeing enough numbers out of the the people who say none of this is any good and we shouldn't do it. Um, we have an overpopulation problem on the planet, but that's an entirely separate issue that needs to be dealt with in another video. So, we'll see you later, guys. Thanks. Bye.